So moving on to part three in my series on the history of Halloween Horror Nights 21. So I mentioned leaks, I mentioned the clues that were given out by the autumn wind. By the way, no one in the general public heard those with that name. Only the seven and myself got that name autumn wind. Everyone else, we referred to it when these things were posted on the various forums and the clues are posted on Facebook or on Twitter or on forums where everyone could read them, we simply said, our mutual friend gave it to us. And that's how we referred to Autumn Wind. We referred to her as our mutual friend. Or just OMF. <clears throat> yes. Uh, now, the commercial got leaked. I told you about that. Well, there was another major leak. But before I do that, because uh, that was near the end, uh, information began to be released uh, about the event officially, but not the way it always had been before. We didn't have a lovely website with slow updates that would give more and more information and all kinds of neat stuff to click on like we did in years before. 2010 really was a bit bare bones, and tw I mean 2011 was even more so. You just had the generic thing and you waited and waited and waited and you never knew what was, you know, there was no updates on that. The updates, the little hints and clues and things, all came on Facebook, on the Halloween Horror Nights Facebook page. For a lad, it was all done by marketing, all done by marketing and publicity. Art and design had nothing to do with the, with that at all. And so they put up stuff like little, little weird cryptic clues, like the Japanese say that luck is death, you know, to hint that there was something to do with luck. Uh, there was uh, <clears throat> some sort of black and white pictures of somebody whose head had been killed or something and a spinning wheel in the background and eventually there were some playing cards showed up you know there was an ace of spades and there was more significantly a queen of spades with uh, red hair and that sort of Veronica Lake thing going over her one eye yes and uh, yeah, these are pretty cool. Um, these are not official. These are fan made, but damn, they're good. Uh, I think it was Jeremy made them. Uh, they're made out of real card stock. They feel like real playing cards. They have the feel and look of real. He did a damn good job with these. I'm really impressed. Very impressed that he did that. All right. Now, uh, <clears throat> does it look like something professionally done? Uh, but uh, they showed up on the website, references to uh, gambling and games, and they even had little games, where a little contest for something. Maybe if you were the 21st person to like this picture, you might learn something. But that sort of thing, uh, that sort of thing continued on through the event, by the way. And they also had a rather clever sort of viral thing. They had a phony Facebook profile for someone called How Galuck. <laughs> yes, that's kind of pushing it. And How Galuck is a young man and it has like a cartoon picture for his uh, photo instead. And and he's really excited about Halloween Horror Nights 21. And he can't wait to go. Eventually when he does go, really bad things happen to him. I guess he pissed off Lady Luck one time too many. And that brings us to the final big leak. When Lady Luck was revealed, of course, when the website went live, and we all found out about lovely Lady Luck and her less than lovely uh, alternate version. Yes, her, her other self. Uh, yes, we found out the lady is a monster. But before that website went live, we f it was leaked in a very amusing way. One of the corporate sponsors, I've been drinking this all along, this is uh, Coke Zero, that's a corporate sponsor, but there's another one, Burger King, yes, Burger King, home of the Halloween Whopper that makes your poop green, <laughs> not that year though, uh, that was last year, and now they've got a really angry Whopper, is it angry going in or angry coming out, that's what I want to know, <laughs> ooh, ooh, a raging red Whopper, ooh, that sounds naughty, <laughs> but getting back to, uh, 
to this. Uh, Burger King's always been a corporate, or well, has been for many years, a corporate sponsor for the event. And back then they got a lot of promotional material to put up in the Burger King shops and in the, you know, when you go to get your burgers and your chips and your and your fizzy drinks and whatever you're going to have for your for your fast food meal to make yourself obese, uh, you, you're going to get pictures of Lady Luck and all about Horror Nights in your napkins and the brown paper bags and on your placemat, on your tray and everything. Oh my goodness. And there's pictures on the, in, in the windows and everything else. So you, oh my goodness, you're going to learn about it that way. Well, they put all that stuff out before the website updated. So it all got leaked and people started posting pictures of Lady Luck's face from a Burger King advert on, on the internet and soon the whole Horror Nights community knew about Lady Luck and what she looked like and all of that before it was officially revealed on the website or Facebook or anywhere else. Well, the, uh, the marketing people took it in stride. Uh, the Burger King leak, they said, ah, oh, what the hell, and they decided to make a joke out of it. So all of a sudden, how Galuck, the little viral guy, little cartoon figure who's, who's, uh, you know, super fan or whatever he's supposed to be, he turns into a Burger King employee. Now he's wearing a Burger King uh, uniform, and apparently he's the sorry bastard who leaked Lady Luck early. And so that explains why, when he got to the event, he didn't get out alive. His luck ran out. Ha <laughs> ha. So that was the end of Hal Gluck. Maybe. Because another very similar person named Hal went to Horror Nights this last year. He didn't give his last name and he wasn't a cartoon, but it makes me wonder about that Hal and the previous Hal. It's sort of coincidence they call these characters Hal. Something similar happened to him. He had a bad... It wasn't luck, though. It was... Uh, you could say chance. Ha! <laughs> But, uh, oh well. Mm. All right, here then. So, Lady Luck herself. As I showed you, we have some different versions. I have two different brochures with this one. I have a green one and a red one. Uh, one was just for October 6th, and the other was the other dates. These were the midnight closing brochures. So we see Lady Luck in her prettier form, although she's a bit bloodstained, nevertheless. Sometimes she's not so bloodstained, but still pretty. And we see her lovely, she's got a bright red hair. Sometimes she wears it so that part of it goes over one of her eyes, just like Veronica Lake. And that little flip, she's got bright green eyes. Her dress is green, she's got a green necklace, a green a emerald necklace and an emerald ring. She's got the spangled green dress all slinky slid up the side of legs can be showing and the green uh, shoes like uh, open toed shoes very pretty in the background if you look carefully you can see the wheel of fortune the wheel of fortune with playing cards on it including the ace of spades on the number 21 black 21 the unlucky number and so here we've got that was, of course, because luck takes two forms. It's good luck, bad luck, you know, happy luck, sad luck. That's the way it is, because the wheel of fortune turns. Sometimes you're at the top of the wheel and everything is rosy. Sometimes you're at the bottom of the wheel and uh, you're shit out of luck, basically. And so she had a secondary form that was bad luck, a crone, a hag, monstrous image. See here the, the more horrific face and uh, more scraggly hair, claw-like fingers, more vicious. And sometimes it became even more horrific. And we have the extreme close-up on another brochure. Yes, the extreme close-up in this brochure. So that one, the, the one with the, uh, those represent the 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. closing times. So the lady is a monster, is what they're trying to say. Be careful of luck, because it isn't always good. And there was no real backstory for Lady Luck. They just came up with this concept. And like Fear before her, an abstract concept personified, but also no haunted house for her. Sorry, Luck. You just got a scare zone. But she did have a nice scare zone. So they continue that from the previous New Age of Darkness icons, of which there have only been two. Lady Luck was the last original icon. They've not created a new icon for the event ever since. They've just brought back old ones, and only just last year they brought back the old ones, including Lady Luck, but not Fear. 
because he's a Pokemon. <laughs> you got him back in the container. I choose you. Hmm. So if Ash, as is rumored, uh, Ash and the Evil Dead, will he take fear out of the lantern and say, I choose you, pick a fear. No, <laughs> no that would be silly. Someone else made that joke. I just followed up on it. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, Lady Luck, of course, had her, her raven. You didn't really see it in the park, but she was on the T-shirt. Also, the raven was uh, in the commercial, although it was a black and white crow in the commercial. Uh, also had her spinning wheel, her wheel of fortune, of course. And, uh, and her theme song, yes. You know, it's the old theme song from Guys and Dolls, famously interpreted by Frank Sinatra. Luck be a lady tonight. Mm. Yeah, that, that great song. Lovely song. Ship tune. Um, so she had a theme song. It's kind of weird. It seems to me that when you have the icons, uh, if you leave out Bloody Mary, because she doesn't, does she count? Let me think. If Jack. Captaker, Director, Storyteller, Bloody Mary, Usher, Lady Luck. You leave fear out of it. Here's the thing. The odd number ones have show, have have theme songs that even ones don't. Don't believe me? Let's Jack, okay? Jack's got Pop Goes the Weasel, right? You know, he's got that one. Captaker, no theme song. Oh, dear. Director, you ought to be in pictures. Ah, storyteller, no theme song. All right, then you've got uh, Bloody Mary. No, that's not right. I guess you skip Bloody Mary too. So you go to Usher. Usher has. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. So. No theme song. I guess Bloody Mary is the one you drop. You leave fear in, uh, and then you go to number seven, which is Lady Luck, and that would be Luck be a lady tonight. So, see, we've got those with theme songs and those who don't have them. But she's one who had a theme song. Wonderful. Uh, backstory for Lady Luck. Not much of a backstory. Not much of a backstory at all. Uh, the other the other icons, most of them had an alias, you know, a human name, like, you know, Jack Schmidt or Albert Kane. Uh, even Fear was a Daru, but, uh, but Luck had only the name of Luck itself. The only possible other name she might have is Fortuna, which is a Roman goddess of luck and good fortune and also bad fortune. She had a spinning wheel as her symbol, and sometimes she was seen wearing a green dress. So that might be exactly who she is. <coughs> and the idea is that throughout all time and space, luck has guided the destiny of mankind for both good and evil. But usually evil, because you see, as good as your luck might get, everybody's luck runs out in the end. Nobody has a happy ending. Because except for those of us who are immortal, everybody else dies. Eventually, your luck ends. So bad luck is in the books for all of us, ultimately. The fates, there's the happy one that spins, and the one that pulls the thread out. But then there's always that girl with the scissors to cut the thread, and it's all over again. That's the, the Greek idea of three fates. So she kind of has all of them in one because she is good luck, bad luck at the same time. All right. And no real backstory, but A&D did take uh, and decided to do something with it. And they came up with her appearing in various forms throughout history in, in 15th century Spain and in 20th and the 1970s and Ohio appearing in all these different places that all the houses took place so that you could tie all the houses together with Lady Luck that somehow every one of the houses a person made a choice 
to take a risk or a gamble uh, based on fate, based on luck, and luck twisted the cards and bad fortune emerged, uh, giving away that this all tied together. And this was all found in the back room because when the, when the, when the website did go live, there was an area of the website called the back room. You know, like you go in a speakeasy and you might have a place in the back room where there's drinking and gambling, which might technically be illegal in your community during Prohibition. Or even nowadays, you might be in a dry county and gambling is often illegal. So if you want to have a, a you know, a, a illegal poker game, you have to go in the back room. Well, hopefully the cops don't come in. We've bribed the cops, see. That's the way it works. So you go back there and there were games back there and the games were video game you could play on your computer and there was one for every one of the houses or at least or actually it ended up being two i think for each of the houses and as you win one and the second one you would get pieces of a, of like a like a chip you know those you get at the casino one of those things of different colors and when you got them uh, they ended up being eight chips and as you got each one a little bit of a house of cards was being built a little bit more and a little bit more and eventually you'd have a whole big mansion made of cards very intricate and beautiful and you could click on different parts of it and when you clicked on each part of the house backstory information would come up pictures news writings all sorts of things for each of the eight haunted houses to give you more information about the backstories and without that we wouldn't have known some of the backstories of the houses and made it more a rewarding experience for those of us hardcore fans who love that kind of shit. This was the last year we'd ever have anything like this. There'd still be games in the future, especially through Legendary Truth, but as far as getting intricate backstories in the houses outside of just a little blurb on the website, that would be it from now on. So, intricate backstory, we'd only find out more stuff if someone told us or revealed it to us maybe during a Legendary Truth game, or maybe if we happen to run into one of these creators and they filled us in, oh, this actually is supposed to be this and this, and we learn more about it that way. But for the most part, this was the last year of the really cool backstory information to add to the whole mythology, like they did, used to do all the time, which is sad. Hmm. All right. So... That was a lot of fun. So let's get on with it then. I've done that, so all of that was revealed with the website. So let's go to the event itself and to the houses. I said there were eight haunted houses, and I did say they were good. I thought collectively some of the strongest houses they had had in years, and even hold quite a bit to houses in successive years, especially with the overabundance of intellectual properties they've had. It was certainly better than 2012, I'll tell you that much. Uh, and, and 2010. Uh, mm, mm. Now, there were eight haunted houses and they were all in the very same locations that they'd been the two previous years. That is to say, a house, two houses in Soundstage 23, one house in Soundstage 22, a house in Disaster Overflow Q area, a house in the Jaws Extended Q area, a house in the... Uh, Building 79, the parade building, and a house each in the World Expo warehouses, that is Sprung Tent 1 and 2. And as I said before, all the houses were originals, there was only, except for one. We only had one intellectual property house. Because IPs returned that year, but only one. But since that year, we've never had majority original with just one IP. That has never happened again. All the successive years since 2011, majority have been IPs with only a couple of original houses, unfortunately. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Intellectual Property House. This was the first house located, one of two houses located in Soundstage 23 that year. And it was called The Thing. It was based on the motion picture, The Thing, that had come out actually hadn't come out yet. On September 23rd, the film hadn't come out yet. Uh, I believe it opened the following weekend, or the weekend after that. I can go back and check, uh, but I do know that I went and saw the movie 
in the cinema on my way to Horror Nights, either the first night I went or the week after that. I know the, oh, I missed opening weekend. It was the first year I'd missed opening weekend in some time, and that's because on opening weekend I was in New York City on September 23rd, 2011, at the time the gates were opening for Halloween Horror Nights 21 and people were going in. I was seated in the Gershwin Theatre in New York City getting ready to watch an, a performance of Wicked, uh, the musical. So that's where I was that weekend. So I was having a good time and I didn't mind missing opening weekend because I knew I'd be going to the event on numerous nights anyway. Mm. But I believe it opened possibly on the 30th, the following weekend, or, or the film I mean, uh, because I seem to think I saw the film before I went in the house the first time. And if not, it would have been uh, the following weekend because I, because I do remember seeing the film and getting a better idea of a house or something. Uh, but for people who went the opening weekend at least, the house itself proved to be a preview of the movie, a little bit of a spoiler in some spots of the movie. Although really, could you spoil the film when you know how it has to end? The very end of the thing, the uh, 2011 the thing, was the very same as the very beginning of the thing in 1982. We'll get to that in the next video.